I do a lab with my students in the first quarter involving density, not just density of solids and liquids, but also density of gases. The students are required to identify a set of unknown solids, unknown liquids, and unknown gases by determining their density. Now, solids, we know how to do that. Find the volume, find the mass. If I gave you a liquid like this, for instance, and said, determine the density of this liquid, well, students figure out the technique. They have to put a graduated cylinder on the balance, figure out how much it weighs empty, or if there's enough balances available, they can zero it, pour a certain amount of liquid in there. They find the mass of the liquid from the scale. They find the volume of the liquid from the graduated cylinder. They divide, they get the density. Pretty simple. But how would you find the density of a gas? I couldn't do that the same thing here, and it's already filled with gas, air, beforehand. Hmm. So I'm going to show you this neat little technique involving syringes. And um, I've got a syringe. I'll show you some modifications I've made. This is a, a 60 milliliter syringe, plastic syringe. I've got a little cap, and this is made out of a piece of aquarium tubing that fits nicely over that. And I've got a little string that just makes sure this doesn't get lost somewhere. Also make sure that this cap stays with this syringe because the masses involved in this are very sensitive and if they switch caps in the middle of the experiment that would change things. So, And it also has a nail. I've blunted the tip there so it's not sharp. And the other modification is in the plunger part of the syringe you can see I've made a hole. And I made that hole simply by taking a nail like this, heating it a Bunsen burner, holding it, of course, with a pair of pliers, so not, not with my fingers, heating the nail, and then just pushing it through there, wiggling around, and it makes a nice hole. It actually has to be big enough, of course, for the nail to fit in there like that. Okay? So you'll see what that's all for. So there is the modified assembly. I have 12 of these made up, one for each lab group or whatever. Okay? Now, when they did the liquid, they had to weigh the cylinder empty. Same here. We have to weigh the syringe empty. But what does that mean? I mean, is it empty now? Well, it is and it's not. It's not empty if we consider the fact that there's air inside and air has mass. So we have to create a vacuum inside her to get this thing completely empty. Okay? So here's how we do that. We put the cap over the top of it. Okay? It's a good snug fit. And as I pull this out, right now there's a vacuum inside of that. That's a truly empty syringe right there. I can confirm that by letting it go and seeing it snap back in. By the way, it's not being pulled back in by the vacuum or the suction, right? It's being pushed back in by the atmospheric pressure with nothing working against it. But I've got to somehow be able to weigh it <laughs> with it held in this position. And that's the purpose of this nail here. Now, when they're working with uh, their lab partner, I, one student pulls it out and the other student puts the nail in, but I'm going to try to do both here at one time just by pulling this out pinch you with my fingers as I put the nail through, okay? See how that works? Okay. And I'm actually going to get a volume reading right now, might as well. The volume on this, I'll set it down here so you can see it, is about 50, we'll say 54.9 milliliters. So we'll write that up on the board, 54.9 milliliters. Okay, now of course we have to weigh the syringe. This will not work on a regular centigram balance. You, can, you won't get enough precision on that. So I go to a milligram balance. I've got one set up here. Let me zero it first. Okay, and put this on there. And we're going to write down this mass of the syringe so we don't have to worry about the, the balance changing over time. 40.486. 40.486 grams. Okay. Now I'm going to put one of these gas samples in here. I've got three gas samples, A, B, and C. Those are my three unknowns. One of them corresponds to carbon dioxide, one corresponds to air, and one corresponds to methane, which I got right out of the methane gas jet there. <clears throat> so we'll get rid of the vacuum, okay, just like that. That's good to do to make sure it didn't leak while you were doing that. You're going all the way, the way back in. That's good. And we'll try putting some of gas sample A in there, okay? Simply connect it to this tubing. This is the same aquarium tubing that I use for the, the stopper. It's been just 
literally taped into the corner of this bag, a little hole there, and some electrician's tape. The pinch clamp I'm just going to move to this position right here, and just so I can now fill it to that same extent, and to make sure I get to the same extent, I'm simply going to put the nail in and push it back out, so it's right like that. And now pinch this off. That's really to keep this thing from leaking out or to keep air from leaking in. Disconnect, finger over it there a second until I can get the cap on it. Now doesn't that look exactly as it looked a minute ago with a vacuum in there? Will it weigh the same? Of course not. It's got a gas in there now, so we should see an increase in mass. Let me again re-zero it in case the scale has drifted at all. And we get now syringe and sample A, 40.560. 40.560. We'll do a little subtraction a sec to figure out how much the gas itself weighed. But in the meantime, how easy is this? And by the way, we're not going to try to put this gas back in the bag, okay? These bags look way too similar. I can color code the liquids to make sure that they can return those to the container. But with gases, I don't bother. So they literally just push that out into the air. Not a big deal. I mean, one of the three is air. I'll go to sample B. Same technique. OK. Open the pinch clamp. This one I'll just put down here. And <clears throat> pull it out. Set the nail in. Push it right there so it's just like it was before. Pinch clamp back on. It's a nice little technique to learn. Disconnect it. Put the cap on there. Okay. I know some air leaked out. I mean, air leaked in or out during that time. It's, uh, there's, a, there's some air sources. It's not perfect, but let's see if we get a different mass this time, hopefully. For, this is sample B, of course, plus the empty, plus the syringe. So we'll re-zero it. Okay. And we're getting a reading of 40.514, 40, actually 40.1, 40 40.507, sorry, 40.507, okay. Even without doing any subtraction, I can just look at that and see that B is less dense than A, okay. So I can start to, do what we have to do C now, and uh, Again, just push that under the air, connect it to C. We'll move the pinch clamp to there, draw it out, okay, nail in there, push it back, pinch clamp. Nice little technique. Okay, so we can make a prediction maybe here, okay. We'll see where it goes. Let's zero this each time just to be consistent. And now this is syringe and gas sample C. And we're talking 40.606, 40.606 grams. So let's see what we've got. Without doing any math at all, except uh, the three gases that correspond were carbon dioxide, air, and keep in mind air is, of course, mostly nitrogen, and um, methane. So carbon dioxide with a molar mass of 44. Air. Air's molar mass, well, if we just use nitrogen, it'd be 28. It actually is up close to around 29 when you incorporate a little bit of oxygen and carbon dioxide in there. So we'll use just 29 as an average molar mass for, for air. And methane, of course, is 16. By the way, it's not pure methane that comes out of the gas jet. It has some ethane mix in as well, so this might be upwards closer to 20, but it certainly is the least dense of the three. And if I now figure this out, let's see. There they are in order of, uh, we have most dense right here. So that would correspond to, and I did that on purpose, C for CO2. Second most dense would be A. Again, I have to make it easy, A for air. <laughs> and that's right, my sample B was methane. Because methane burns, B. <laughs> okay, those are the right connections, but what kind of, uh, how close are these to the actual values? 
Well, in order to get that, we're simply going to take and subtract the empty syringe from each of these three full syringes. Okay. And we have um, 40.560 minus 40.486. We have, for the mass of the A, the first one, 0 0.074 grams. Now I'm going to divide that by the volume. I'm sorry, that's grams per our volume was 54.9 milliliters. Okay, we're going to just do that each time to get the density. So divided by 54.9, and we have, this is a very good value, 0 0.0013 grams per milliliter for our air. Okay? The next one, methane. We'll go back and compare these to what they would be based on the molar masses. For methane, actually, you know what, I'll just do it for the, for the air, and you can then figure out for the rest. But just for the air, what should the molar mass of air be? Well, 29 grams, that's the mass of one mole, divided by the volume of one mole. Now, you're thinking 22.4 liters, but we're not at zero degrees Celsius. Up at room temperature, volume of gas is more like around 24 liters. So we're just going to take 29 divided by 24 liters and get... 1.2 grams per liter, which is, of course, 0 0.0012 grams per liter. Not bad. <clears throat> okay? You could do similar calculations for the, um, that was the air, for the methane, and for the carbon dioxide, and see how close they come to our densities we get from the molar masses there. Okay? So, what, what did this really involve? It involves extending the idea of density from just solids and liquids to gases as well. And that's valuable. There's lots of demonstrations I like to do during the year that depend on the understanding that gases have densities too. Um, and it involves a rather simple piece of equipment. You just make a class out of these and they last forever. You do need a pretty sensitive balance. You can see how we're really needing it to, the, to get even two sig figs in our density there. You need to have um, a milligram balance. Um, a question that you could ask students as a good follow-up to this to really see if they understand what's going on is a problem. Um, if an evacuated flask, in other words, a flask with a vacuum in it, is weighed on a balance and then filled with a low-density gas like helium and weighed again, will the, balloon, will, will the flask weigh more, less, the same? Now they're thinking helium. That lifts things up. It'll weigh less. They haven't really picked up on the idea if that's their answer. Of course it will weigh more. Helium has mass, just like any other gas. Everything has to weigh more than a vacuum because a vacuum is nothing. So, a nice little demonstration of how to determine the density of gases using a syringe and a milligram balance. Thank you.